Be your own hero is what I say. You might be saying to yourself, well, Zay, what do you mean by be your own hero? Meaning, don't allow yourself to be put in a situation where you're going to be placed at the losing end. Basically, stop waiting for people to save you. I don't care if it's a man or if it's a woman. You understand what I'm saying? I know family and friends off the top of my head, and even including myself, that have done the same thing time after time, year after year, situation after situation. And you have to think, have you really ever given yourself time to breathe? You know what I'm saying? Have you ever just been alone for a while, not trying to get to know nobody? You know what I'm saying? Just really focus on your craft, whatever it is. I don't care if it's working out. I don't care if it's losing weight, gaining weight, just school and work, your kids, trying to go back to school, whatever. Have you given yourself time to breathe? Have you given yourself time to heal? You know what I'm saying? A lot of times we we move from one situation to the next situation and most times it's never from a good situation to a good situation it's from a bad situation and we end up getting in the worst situation you know what I'm saying from a bad relationship to the worst relationship you know what I'm saying and, I, and I've done that myself so let me give you an example of what I mean when I say be your own hero uh, maybe back in 2010 I was um, dating this older man it sounds weird he was not older I was I was like 20 he was like 30 I think he was like 30 31 years old and um at the time me and my family wasn't talking i didn't have no best friends i was just by myself just as to how everything played out at the time and um i remember at the time i was working um six to two at mcdonald's i was like the maintenance man at mcdonald's uh in miami and you know i just got sick and tired of being sick and tired and long story short i wanted to be rescued and I remember I was talking, I had met this man when, um, down, I had met this man doing Scissor, which is, um, like Gay Pride in Miami, which is in May. And, uh, you know, we talked, we vibed, we kicked it, whatever, whatever. So we was talking all that time. So from May to about September, you know, we was talking, um, every day texting, you know, sending constant communication. I've never really did that before. And I dang for sure wouldn't do it at this point in my life, but I just don't really believe in a long distance relationship. It really, it wasn't a relationship at the time, but it just friendship, especially when you haven't built a foundation with the person that lives in the same city as you do. That's a whole new story. So long story short, um, I end up moving to Georgia um, with this man and. Um, just let's just say a lot of things that he claimed to be wasn't it wasn't everything wasn't legit like how it would seem you know what i'm saying and i put i put myself in a position where i was stuck and i needed him and if he didn't allow it to be so it wouldn't have been so long story short and um i remember during that time i have never in my life even at this point all of all the way up until now i have never at least off the top of my head, I had never remember feeling so stuck in my life. I, I felt like I had nobody, which I really didn't at the time. Everybody was just doing their own thing. And I, I mean, when they were doing their own thing, that meant I called them and no, 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 no. So you just call, you know, you just create, carve your own path. You know what I'm saying? You just do what you got to do. And nobody could judge me because ain't nobody was helping me. And that's just the truth of the matter. And I just remember I was 20 at the time. And I was 21. All he kept telling me, oh, you can't do this. You can't go to the club. Like, what you going to do? You, you, you can't do nothing. Huh? And I remember, and that's when I had first got there, man. And this, it was a small city. It wasn't no public transportation. Everything was so spread out. I didn't have no family, no friends, nobody. I was stuck like Chuck. And it was no joke. I just felt so helpless. I felt so hopeless. I felt alone. I mean, so I just, I had to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? And I took a lot of his crap because that's all I had, unfortunately. And I mean, it was so much. It would take me hours and hours just to go down a list of all the foolishness that I went with him. I left him, came back to Miami for a few months, and went back. Because my mind had him mature. I was stuck. My heart was still with him, even though I had came back to Miami. And I said, I was done. Surely but slowly, he lured me back in. I can't even blame him. I lured myself back into him, entertaining the thought, entertaining the conversation. You know what I'm saying? You said, oh, I ain't going to do this again. And before you know it, you all wrapped up again. 
you know what I'm saying? I was looking for a savior. I, look, I was looking for somebody to save me. And unfortunately, I looked to a man, you know what I'm saying? Instead of, of, instead of God, of course. And I remember, I just, nothing I would try would not work. I could not find a job to save my life. I would just go on interview after interview and just put out all these applications calling. You know how that process is. They're so tedious and you're in competition with all the probably other hundreds and thousands of people there is in the city. And um, you know what I'm saying? I didn't have a car. It, it was just so much was, excuse me, so much was going on. It just, it was frustrating and I felt stuck. And I just knew, I had never felt that way in my life, but I just knew God wasn't pleased with my life at all on many levels. Now, I'm not even just talking about being with another dude. But I just knew this is not where I'm supposed to be. I was supposed to be in Cali like I am now, pursuing my dream, working on my music, doing what God has called me to do. And I'm like, I had to understand, that's why things ain't working out for you. Because you're outside of God's will. You ain't no, you're not even across the street from this will. Like, <laughs> you might as well say you're across, you know, like, I just knew it. I just like, God, what do I do? Like, how do I come out? And one thing I've realized personally, especially with myself, is sometimes we ask questions that we already have the answer to. We asking God, that's like, why are you asking me? This is how I hear his voice. It's like, why are you asking me? You already have the answer to it. How do you get out? You get out. That's first. And you let go. Don't hold on. Don't try to. So some things you need to, uh, what's the word? Just straight cut off. Sever it. That's the word. You need to sever the relationship. Don't, you know, stop seeing the person and slowly. Some some things you, you better off just severing the relationship. Don't call, change the number, move. Do what you got to do to get out of the situation. Don't let nobody feel like they can talk to you because they paid all the bills in your house and so you feel like you have to take it. If you're in that situation, that means you need to get out. You know what I'm saying? Get up on your feet. If you're not handicapped, ain't no reason why no grown, grown woman or grown man should be able to tell you what to do up where you stay. Or even if you're living with them, if you're in that situation, get out. Don't let nobody make you feel like you're stuck. That's this one of the worst feelings in the world, being stuck somewhere, being stuck in traffic, being stuck in the elevator. I mean, just being stuck in a, a line at McDonald's, like, being stuck is not a good situation. You can't go back, you can't go forward, you can't, just can't turn to the left, you can't turn to the right. Like, it's not a good situation. Get out. Be your own hero. You understand? God gave you enough sense to know right from wrong. You, you know that feeling when you got no business doing what you're doing. You know you have no business being in a relationship with that person. You know what I'm saying? You know you have no business having kids with this person, entertaining that type of person. You know that drug dealer, that prostitute, that hoe, whoever, whatever it is, him, she, them, group, whatever. Be your own hero. Save yourself and get out. It's a very simple message. I just um, wanted to share that kind of been on my heart in the last few days. A guy gave it to me. I had put it in my phone. I just wanted to come and discuss that with you guys. Um, and one last thought. Um, one of my favorite plays is Medea Goes to Jet. No, Medea Class Reunion. And the scene where she's with uh, Tamla Mann and um, Cheryl Pepsi Riley. And she, Medea was like, I'm going to try to get this right. She said, um, The Bible says, Man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. She said, why the hell would you add on to the trouble that you already promised? Catch that. Happy Saturday. Be blessed. Stay all the way driven.